Back. 52 people are murdered daily in South Africa. More than 30% of those with a gun. Tonight, we tackle this explosive issue. In the latest gun-related killing, 12 people died. Today, a memorial service for those Gauteng taxi drivers who were ambushed in KwaZulu-Natal. It was held in Johannesburg. And police have tonight arrested one of the gunmen. It was confirmed on this show in the last hour. Now, it's estimated that there are over 5 million guns in the country. Only 3 million of them are registered. How then do we reduce gun-related crimes? We're going to be discussing these issues around gun use and legislation. My guests are Paul Oxley from Gun Owners of South Africa and Sarah Chitambo from Free Gun Free South Africa. Now, the police didn't want to join our discussion tonight, but you can. You can tweet or call us, and those details are on the screen there below. Good to have both of you, Paul Oxley and Sarah Shetambo. How do we stop guns from falling into the wrong hands? I think what we have to do is what the commissioner was speaking about in terms of really seizing, seizing and controlling the flow of guns out of legal hands into illegal pool. So when, when guns are stolen, when guns are lost, they, go, they get stolen from legal owners and end up in the illegal pool. So that's mostly what's been happening. And we've also seen, obviously, issues of fraud and corruption as well. Yeah, because mm. illegal guns, yes, you're right, so licenses that are not being renewed, stolen, mm. and brought into the country. Right. The, 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 in actual fact, the figures that, you, that you're dealing with are, 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 are a fraction or, or a very small reflection of what the actual situation is estimated to be. Um, the University of South Australia did a study a couple of years ago, and they reckon there's 13 million firearms in South Africa, only which, of, of, of which only 3 million are, are licensed to, 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 to individuals. And that's probably and prob the only ones we know about. Yeah, absolutely. So, so there's, there's, there's a huge, there's a flood of firearms in the country. Um, very few of them, well, comparatively very few of them in private hands. Um, what you're saying is quite correct. Guns are, of course, stolen from, from just as everything else. Cars are stolen, uh, everything's stolen from, from people as, as victims of crime. Um, there's, there's, but that's a, that's, a, that's a small part of, of, of the bigger problem. The bigger problem is that we have a, a culture of lawlessness and of, of extreme violence in the country, which is very worrying. And I'm, mm. I'm, I'm not it's sure not where it comes better, from. It? It's not getting any better. It's becoming worse and worse and worse. Yeah. Um, and, and that's very worrying. And I'm not sure how, to con how, how, how we're going to conquer that. I mean, what do you think the, the driving force is? We're all is... on the same side, yeah. It, 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 correct. What, what's the driving force behind that increase in this violence? Yeah, I think there the, are the number of factors. And of course, we have a big unemployment pro problem in this country. And I think that's one of the biggest, Surely. and of course, crime. You know, mm. people want to get hold of these guns so that they can use them in crimes against other people. So I think that is a big part of what is driving illegal guns and guns being used in uh, criminal activity. Uh, I just want us to look at where illegal guns fro come from. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got a great graphic which just mm -hmm. shows how big a problem it is. And it should be coming up over there any minute now. But it just shows how easily... Um, Oh, that's not very clear, is it? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but yeah, okay. I mean, a lot of guns are stolen through theft. I mean, it's extraordinary. Something like two guns are taken from police mm -hmm. every day. Uh, mm. Twenty, the, you know, the red ones on the right are stolen from people. Then there's the illegal market. I mean, it just really shows mm. how easy it is to get hold of these guns. And I, I, well, now, now the interesting thing is that, that the estimates are that, that police lose... Uh, per capita, 12 times as many guns as, as members of the public um, because they're targeted mm -hmm. to, to start with, because, because they're easily corruptible. I mean, we've, we've got great examples, great terrible examples in South Africa of, of, of guns flowing through the police stations into the hands of criminals. Mm -hmm. Colonel Chris Prinsler, prime example. Uh, 2,400 there's, 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 guns. 2,400 guns, but they've been linked positively to more than 1,000 murders on the Cape Flats. Yeah, because ballistic testing Those guns only. Those guns came that. straight from the police into the, oh, to, 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 to the Cape Flats gangs. Yeah. And just, to, I mean, to add on to what Paul's saying about 
you know, the recovery rate for these guns that mm. are stolen or lost is very low. We, they hardly ever get recovered, so well, that's well, also very well, now worrying. Well, that's an factor. interesting statistic. We got, we, got Parliament, we got the police to admit in Parliament two years ago. Um, the, the actual facts are that, that, that firearms stolen from, from, from individuals are, there's almost a 100% recovery rate by the police on those, on those firearms. But firearms, from... firearms that are sourced from the police are almost never recovered. And why do you think? And the reason that is, for that is because the because they, they investigate? because they supplied by the police, so so they they sanitised, the serial numbers are are, oh. are are ground off them. Firearms from from civilians are almost uh, in literally there's there's a hundred percent recovery rate, mm. uh, and they can only be a hundred percent recovery rate if they're still identifiable. So they so the, the, when the police capture the go find the guns wherever, they can actually identify where they came from. Yeah. And I, I should imagine that's one of the big problems of illegal guns, if it's not coming from somebody who has them legally, yes. is that you, you, you can't trace. trace. You can say, is this gun responsible for this? I mean, but where does you it, know. who's behind it? So, so, so that, that's a great problem, and it's a great problem around the world. It's not, it's not uh, unique mm. to South Africa. Uh, we've seen, you know, unfortunately, we tend to, to all fall into this, this Hollywood trap. So we see these, these, these fantastic uh, CSI uh, series in the States where they, they pick up a bullet or, or, or a cartridge case from a scene and they're identified by magic. Magic happens in a, in a box and, and they know who it comes. It doesn't work like that, yeah. unfortunately. Um, yeah, we, and, yeah, I mean, the, ballistics the, testing is a lengthy process. It's a it, costly process. And it doesn't work. Yeah. Okay, so let's, let's talk about some of the measures that are in place and we did ask yes. the police to come but I believe mm. that there's a, a legal case against them. Well, well unfortunately the, the National Commissioner and I are the two opposing deponents in the case tomorrow oh. in the North Harting High Court. Then. So he can't talk to me. We can greet each other and shake hands but we can't say anything so, about it. So what is the issue? I mean this is dealing with mm. illegal guns, this is dealing with renewing your license and people are really struggling to get their licenses renewed. Well, well so, so the thing is, the Act, the Firearms Control Act, the national legislation, um, which, which the National Commissioner agrees with. We both agree exactly on the same points. Um, section uh, section 28.6 of the Act allows for people to renew firearm licenses even once they're expired on good cause shown. So guys, people were overseas, they were sick, they were having a car accident. Uh, they forgot. They, they forgot. Um, whatever they come in late to renew their license now the police are supposed to accept those guns in on good cause shown there must be a decent explanation and then it's evaluated and then they decide well okay we're going to accept this or we're not going to accept this but that's there's got to be a decision made the problem is in february 2016 the acting national commissioner um, within seven days of his appointment issued a directive which said that the police refu will no longer take in any firearms that are past their, ex their, 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 their license expiry date. Now that's illegal. The National Commission of Police doesn't make legislation. That's but Parliament's also, job. I guess that turns people into criminals then, doesn't it? Well, if, that's if exactly you, what's happened. Got a gun, that's We've illegal. gone through the whole the con constitutional court process now and it has now been determined by the, by the constitutional court that, that's, that's, that those people have been criminalized. Okay. They're in illegal possession of those firearms. But what the Constitutional Court also said in its judgment, which was released on, on the 7th of June, what they also said is that they, ref that, that they, um, they will not uh, um, allow the strictest form of strict liability to be applied to those people if those people have made an effort to, to bring themselves back inside a scheme of legality. So if they've tried to renew those licenses, you will not the, be penalized. they will not be, they cannot be arrested, they cannot be penal, they cannot be prosecuted. Unfortunately, what we've seen the message that the, the general officers in the South African police force understand and, and how it gets down to the, the boots on the ground, there seems to be a bit of a problem because we've seen numerous reports in the press in the last month of, of station commanders and DFOs, designated firearms officers at, at, at small stations, threatening okay, so people with arrest. Okay, oh, sorry, let's, let's, let's leave that there and bring in Ms. Grant from KZ. Go ahead, Ms. Grant. Hi, um, evening. Um, I just want to know, all the firearms that we were asked to hand in to the police stations, what actually happened to them? Sorry? Because there seems to be more crime since all those firearms were handed in than ever. 
I think, Paul, touch, thank you uh, on that briefly. But, Sarah, what is yeah. your response I mean, what we can that? tell you is supposed to happen to the firearms is if you bring it in if you, and you want to have it relicensed, obviously it has to be held at a police storage uh, until that they, they process your, your paperwork and it's legally in your hands again. But you need that paperwork in order to make it to be on the right side of the law again. And uh, what happens if you do not want it to be relicensed, that firearm is supposed to be destroyed by the police. And, and, and you wonder why, why they would destroy it. Let, well, let's, let's well, the police, the, the problem is that the police have no facilities for safekeeping. They have, a, they have a 13 store at every police station, which is an evidence store. And that's their only safe storage. They have no facility for safekeeping of firearms. Any firearm that's taken into the police is assumed to be surrendered for destruction. Um, the problem is they Very supposed quickly, because we've run out of time. Sorry, to, I'm going to put a quick, quick question to you. Yes. I mean, is there any chance, I mean, guns are behind all of this, that we're going to see a gun-free society here? For us, that is our vision. We want a vision that protects the rights of people living in this country to feel free to be without the threat of guns. And we know that guns maim, we know that guns kill, and leave people permanently injured, and we want them out of circulation. They're probably sadly here to stay. Paul and Oxley. guns save lives and guns are used for sporting purposes and etc, etc, etc. There's a long list. Um, it's guns a long save conversation. Lives. Sorry, we've guns run out of time. Lives. Paul Oxley, sorry, Chitamba, thank you very much. Now, he is the country's youngest mayor and he has a sparkling record, but is the Midval mayor's political allegiance helping or hindering him? The DA's Bongani Baloye is with us next.